Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll try to fix my NES. Recently, it started having some issues like blinking red light and no signal, and this could be caused by various factors, for example, a dirty connector or also the lockout shape. So let's have a closer look together. I've already tested the console and every time I turn it on, what happens is that I have no signal. As you can see, the red light blinks and also I have no signal and a black screen for a couple of seconds and also I have to keep it held down myself because I think the mechanism inside broke so let's have a look inside together. These pins over here are usually the cause of this issue but sometimes it could also be the lockout system which is a protection mechanism that prevents the console to read unofficial cartridges but sometimes it malfunctions and keep resetting the console so let's take everything apart. So there are just six screws here on the back and you need a pretty long screwdriver actually to remove the screws and one of the first thing I want to do is to give everything a good clean since it looks a bit dusty. Well, the inside is a bit dusty but nothing to be worried about and also the capacitor here is in good condition the capacitor of the power supply so i don't think i really need to replace it and i also need to remove this metal shield over here to have access to the 72 pins connector but i think someone has already opened this console before since some screws are missing so let's have a look inside Okay, there are just a couple of screws left and then I can remove this whole block over here and actually the 72 pins are connected to the motherboard itself so I'll also need to remove the motherboard to lift the motherboard a little bit so I can remove the connector. There is just one screw left and then I can have access to the motherboard and I actually need to flip this over so I can remove these connectors. Now I should be able to slide it out easily and also remove the connector from the motherboard. Let's see. Oh, there is also this metal shield that I need to remove. And then it should be quite easy. One set of pins is to connect the connector to the motherboard and the other one is for the cartridge so I need to clean both thoroughly to make it work. The first thing I want to do is to clean this part of the motherboard since it looks like there is a layer of dirt or something definitely needs some cleaning and also I've opened this part so I can have a look at the power board I don't see any obvious signs of issues, so I'll just leave it as it is and I'll focus on this part. So I want to clean it with this fiberglass pan, but very gently, just enough to remove the initial layer of dirt. I don't want to apply too much pressure to avoid removing too much material, which could accelerate corrosion. I'll take care of this part first and then the back as well. I really hope the issue is just with the pins. Usually they just need a good cleaning, but it's also possible they're not making proper contact anymore because the pins need to be slightly bent outward to make better contact. And now on the other side too, very gently, just trying to remove this first layer of dirt well, I didn't actually clean that much, so I'll try using a contact cleaner and then a Q-tip. Well, that's already working much better. Well, it's so dirty that I also need to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol to clean it and I'll need to check all the connections here starting from these pins and these solder joints on the motherboard just to be sure because it looks quite corroded. I'm not sure that it's making any contact. I've tried to clean it very well but 
it's still very dirty, so I'll just try to see if the pins are connected and then I'll use a metal polish. Well, the looks in good condition. And if there is connection, of course, you should hear a beep like this. Well, it looks like they're all connected. And I'll also check this side of the board and then I'll use a metal polish. Let's see. So I've checked all the connections here and on the other side of the board and some of them are just not connected, but a lot of pins are connected just if I press really hard with the probes of the multimeter. So I think I'll just use a metal polish, which is very useful for rust, corrosion and also to protect the contact. So I'll just use this and leave it there for five minutes and then I'll try to see if I can solve the issue in this way. I'll clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol and honestly, it already looks much cleaner. It should make much better contact now. I was worried those corrosion marks wouldn't come off, but obviously it couldn't read cartridges in this way. I need to remove all the polish and then once the Q-tip comes out completely clean, I can move on to the connector pins. Okay, so now the motherboard is super clean and I can just check the connections and then I can move on to the connector itself. But before doing that, since we're talking about circuit boards, I also wanted to mention PCBWay, which offer custom PCBs, personalized assembly services and various accessories that are useful for projects like this, with the ability to customize every detail from the color of the traces to the size of the PCB. And if you're working on a simple project, their website has plenty of options along with a large collection of projects created by others that can be a great source of inspiration. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. And now let's move on to the connector. And now I want to check the 72 pins connector. And there are two different lines of pins. This one back here should be connected to this one. And this one should be connected to this one. And if there is connection, you should hear a beep like this. It's actually very inexpensive to replace it. But if it's working and if I don't see any broken connection, I don't see why I can just clean the pins and try the console again. A few moments later. Okay, so fortunately I didn't find any issue and now I can just clean the connector. Luckily, no connections are broken, so at least I don't have to deal with that issue. Now, I just want to slightly widen the pins to make sure they press against the motherboard properly over time, NES connectors wear out, and that's one of the main reasons the console start acting up glitches, flashing screens, or classic blinking red light. And by adjusting the pins a little, I can make sure the connection is solid again. After that, I'll clean everything up with some sandpaper, especially the part that connects to the motherboard, those pins were really in bad shape, super corroded and probably weren't making any content at all. If that was the case, it's no wonder the console wasn't working. I really hope this fixes the problem, but just to be safe, I'm also going to either cut or ground pin 4 of the lockout chip. That chip was supposed to block unlicensed game, but sometimes it start malfunctioning and the console gets stuck in a boot loop. So blinking red light, no signal and nothing works. 
and that's exactly what was happening here so I'll also try that and with this done I'm hoping this console will be back in working order so reading cartridges properly without any more issues. And now I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper to clean the contacts here. I don't want to press very hard since I don't want to ruin them, it's just to be sure that they are super clean before putting everything back in place. So I've cleaned the connector and the motherboard and I don't see any of the signs of issues actually. One thing I could still do is to either cut or ground pin 4 of the lockout chip which is the CIC checking integrated circuit which is Nintendo's way of preventing unlicensed game from running. Sometimes this chip malfunction causing blinking red light and no signal which is the same problem I was experiencing before. But before cutting pin 4 I would still like to see if it works in this way just by cleaning the connector and the motherboard and then consider cutting pin 4. So I'll just reassemble everything and see if it works. I've just cleaned the console, so I really don't want to use a dusty game. I'm just going to open the cartridge and give it a quick clean before testing the console. I'm just going to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to clean the inside, but it looks pretty clean actually. Okay, and now that the cartridge is clean, I can test if it works. And now let's see if it works. I really hope it does, since I don't want to cut pin 4 of the lockout chip. Let's see. It turns on. And it works! Let's see if the controller also works. Everything works fine, so I guess I really just needed to clean the contact and the connector inside the console and fortunately I won't need to cut pin 4 of the lockout chip. So I think I'm just going to play a bit more with the Goonies just to make sure everything works fine. I've also tested other games and I haven't had any more issues like the blinking red light. And Zelda is definitely one of my favorite games. I've played a lot and the golden cartridge always adds to its charm. I've seen the Nintendo Switch 2 presentation video. I'm really excited since it's coming out soon. And there was a segment about Zelda and they mentioned improved frame rates, higher resolution, and shorter lot times so I'm super excited and I can't wait to try it on this with too and now that I'm sure the NES is working fine this video ends here as always I hope you liked this video let me know in the comments what you think and if you ever had a similar issue don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to my patreon page where I post updates photos and videos behind the scene and also additional videos and see ya in the next video bye